Hello there, and welcome to the Pets Aplenty channel. Making a selection between the miniature poodle and the toy poodle can be pretty challenging as both breeds are outstanding in their unique ways. We understand this challenge, so don't worry, because as usual, we've got you covered here on Pets Aplenty. Today on the channel, we've gathered all the helpful information about these breeds to help you make the ultimate choice on the dog which gets that particular spot in your home with a nine round battle that covers covers everything from their history to their health. Before we continue though, we would love for you to become a member of the channel by clicking on the join button down below. You can also review the perks of Pets Aplenty membership after clicking the join button. Alright, here we go. The Miniature Poodle versus the Toy Poodle. Let's start the fight. Round 1 Dog Breed History the history of the miniature poodle dates back farther than that of toy poodles. In reality, the standard poodle was bred down to miniature poodle size sometime in the 18th century. These little poodles were later used as performing dogs in French circuses. Around this time, they were bred for their temperament and company and were popular house pets for the aristocracy. The toy poodle appeared about two centuries after the miniature poodle initially appeared. Toy poodles grew popular in the 20th century as more people moved to cities with smaller yards and less access to grassy places suitable for pets. While the standard poodle was created as a hunting water dog, the miniature and toy poodles are often bred to be companions, therapy, or service animals. Their friendly disposition is what makes little poodles such good companions. Both dogs scored a point on our scoreboard for this round, so we're off to an excellent start. Round 2 – Appearance Standard poodles are often larger than 15 inches at the shoulder. They provide the general size standard for poodles, and different poodles are compared to the standard to identify their variations. Miniature poodles should be between 11 and 15 inches tall at the shoulder. Toy poodles are considerably tiny, measuring little more than 10 inches. The only variation in appearance between these dogs is their size. The three breeds all adhere to the same official breed standard. They have curly, thick hair, that is generally solid in color. They come in various tints, blues, browns, silvers, grays, cafe au lait, apricot, and creams. Poodles are elegant, alert, and nicely proportioned. We believe the age-old issue about whether a dog's size counts in a fight apply here, given that the distinction in appearance boils down literally to its size. Again, they both get the point each for this round. So, it's two points for the miniature poodle and two for the toy poodle. In our opinion, these dogs should get an extra bonus for simply being poodles. Round 3 – Temperament the toy poodle is intelligent, active, and has good friends and companions. The breed is easy to train because they are one of the most intelligent dog breeds. The species can be good with kids, but it's usually best for older kids. Younger children may hurt this small dog by playing too rough with it. Without proper training and socialization, toy poodles can act in ways that aren't very nice, like growling, snapping, and generally being nervous. Miniature poodles are intelligent, adaptable, and easy to train, so it's not surprising that they were once prevalent circus dogs. Miniatures like to be around people and can bond with each family member. They're usually friendly to strangers and other dogs and pets, too. Both dogs are giving it all they've got, but the mini inches forward a point for being easier to handle by kids of all ages. So we're down to three points, with two for the toy poodle. Round 4 – Grooming Poodles don't shed much, but that doesn't mean they don't need to be groomed. To keep mats from forming near the roots, poodle coats must be brushed all day down to the skin. If you don't do this, your dog's hair may get so tangled that it will need to be shaved for remedy. This is why many poodle owners get their poodles professionally trimmed once or twice a month. If you want a poodle of any size, you need to think about this. Shortening the coat is another option. This might be a good idea in the summer. If you 
have allergies and want a dog that won't bother them, be careful when you choose a puppy. Even though poodles don't shed very often, which makes them less likely to cause allergic reactions, they're not totally allergy-free. Doctors advise you that you may need to spend time with the dog you want to adopt if you have allergies. This will enable you to see how you react to him in particular. It appears they both get one point each for this round. It's four points to three for the toy poodle. Round 5. Socialization we all understand the importance of socializing our poodles, but finding the time to do so on top of our already hectic schedules may be challenging. Teaching your puppy to learn that the world is a safe place and that unfamiliar situations, people, and animals don't have to be frightening is the primary goal of socialization. It's done by giving pups positive reinforcement in new surroundings throughout their enchanted first three months of life. Socialize a puppy between three and 12 weeks. A little experience can modify a puppy's behavior during this period. If you bring your dog home at eight weeks or older, you have a month to match maximize his development. If puppies aren't socialized early, they're more likely to be fearful, cautious, and apprehensive around new animals, people, and circumstances. When a puppy is introduced to new sounds and sights in a good way, he'll grow up brighter, healthier, and more confident. In other words, he won't be bothered by ordinary things like hearing a garbage truck or going up steep stairs. In addition to formal training in puppy obedience schools or going for a walk in the pack, Simply running errands with your dog is a practical way to achieve this goal. One point each, everyone, and we end this round at five points to four for the Toy Poodle. Round 6. Training Toy and mini poodles may be small, but they require training like other dogs. Interestingly, they are bright, eager to please, and ready to learn. Your poodle will adore learning from you as it allows him to spend more time with you. They'll also appreciate agility and tracking games. Toy and mini poodles are great dogs for tiny apartments. However, you must take them out for daily walks. Furthermore, you can take them swimming, as these natural swimmers enjoy using their energy in the water. They both get a well-deserved point each for this round. It's six points for the miniature poodle and five for the toy poodle. It seems like the toy poodle isn't giving up. Let's see what happens in the next round. Round 7. Exercise the mini and toy poodles do best when they're taken for a stroll around the neighborhood daily and given vigorous play sessions every day. These bright puppies like playing new games and learning new tricks all the time, although their favorite activity is to retrieve little things. They respond exceptionally well to incentive-based training, such as training with food or games, and they appreciate the cerebral stimulation of learning new games or skills. Such fantastic similarities, everyone. These dogs are excellent. You'd agree they should both get the point each for this round, leading us to seven points to six for the Toy Poodle. Round 8. Diet and Nutrition like any other dog, your poodle's health is directly impacted by what he eats. Because most poodles are little, a slight difference in weight will make them appear skinny or overweight. The amount of food required by a dog is determined by several factors, including age, metabolism, and activity level. The miniature poodle needs three quarters to one cup of high-quality daily food split into two meals. The toy poodle needs a quarter to half a cup of high-quality daily food divided it into two meals. If your dog is growing overweight or underweight, a minor variation from the suggested daily amount and meal frequency is permissible. Because this dog has a small mouth, he should be served in a shallow dish. A narrow and deep bowl may be intricate for the dog to eat from. Also, ensure the bowl's edges are not sharp to avoid injuries. Although the toy poodle consumes slightly less, the cost of feeding these cute pooches wouldn't break the bank. It's pretty challenging not to give a point to both dogs at the end of this round. So, there you have it. Eight points to seven for the Toy Poodle. Round 9. Health 
The benefit of being a small dog breed is shared by toy and mini poodles. Compared to more giant breeds, they're more likely to live longer. It's often believed that smaller sized animals within a species often live longer than their bigger counterparts. The average lifespan of a toy or miniature poodle is 12 to 15 years. Nonetheless, the study predicts that more toy poodles will be on the older end of that age range. However, a toy or mini poodle's lifespan is influenced by various factors. They consist of genetics, diet, exercise, and mental and emotional health. They appear to have the same health problems. Toy poodles, however, have a more significant number of health issues due to their smaller size, such as eye problems, heart conditions, and injuries from people or other animals. As they age, however, toy and mini poodles are susceptible to several ailments, including cataracts and diabetes. Another illness that runs in the poodle family is epilepsy. A yearly checkup is essential for your toy or mini poodle to reduce the possibility that a health issue will shorten their lifespan. Your veterinarian can identify and treat certain medical conditions that way. The toy poodle wins the round for having a slightly longer lifespan and giving us more time for their affection. And wow, the little guy has leveled the playing field, and just in time too. We have a tie, everyone. Eight points for the miniature poodle and eight points for the toy poodle. In conclusion, every human has a choice. It's vital to consider your personal needs and environment during adoption. Both dog breeds can work excellently as a pet or companions. This is our evaluation. Remember, yours may be different. In addition, before adopting a dog, do well to seek professional advice from the breeder and your veterinarian. What are your thoughts on today's contest? Which breed is better as a pet in your opinion? Let us know in the comment section. Consider becoming a member of the channel by clicking the join button to get early access to our upcoming videos plus other membership perks. Also, check out our playlists and click on the video links that pop up at the end of this video. Thank you for watching.